Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome to video number 500. I cannot quite believe it. What started with two really quite scruffy videos and a bet with my wife that I would get two and a half thousand views on YouTube has turned into this. 25 million views and counting. I am flabbergasted sometimes when I think about it and it's all thanks to you. I make the videos but you watch the videos, you've subscribed to the channel, you comment on them, you like them, you dislike them and you watch them consistently and faithfully and I'm so grateful to you for that. If you're not already a subscriber of the channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that big subscribe button now and we'll carry on with 500 more videos, I hope. Well, I thought today to celebrate this anniversary, I would look through my back catalogue, my library of all 500 videos, and I would pick what I consider to be the best of the best in terms of value for money. This channel focus has always been on value for money. I'm Scottish, I just can't help it, it's in my blood. My point has always been that you don't have to spend a fortune to have a great time in this hobby and have a great watch on your wrist. And I think all of these watches in some way really represent that channel ethos. Now, it would be tempting to fill this list with $50 Casios, and indeed there are a few. Similarly, it would be tempting to fill this list with AliExpress specials, and indeed there are a few. But value is not necessarily always about the bottom line price or the most specs you can get for your dollar. Value goes a little bit further than that sometimes, I think. It's about having the right watch on your wrist, the right brand name on that watch on your wrist. It's about buying it today and knowing you got a good deal, but it's also about knowing that you'll be wearing the watch in a year's time, five years time, still look down at your wrist and think, I bought well. So that's kind of what I'm talking about today. I'm going to jumble them up a bit in terms of price. I think all bar one of them do fit into the 500 US dollar or less bracket that has always been the profile of the channel. So thanks again for watching. Let's get on with today's list. And that list begins with a Casio, perhaps unsurprisingly, you could have put money on that, couldn't you? I'm going to start with the cheapest, work my way to the most expensive, jumble up the middle. I'll leave links to all of these in the description of the video. Use them as your starting point. Obviously, do your own research. Find the best prices for you for your local market, your local currency. So this is the Casio W217H. You should be paying around $20. There's a couple of different colors. There's a gold ringed one and a blue ringed one here, both on Amazon.com. Perhaps you were expecting the F91W to be included in this list. It is a legendary little watch after all, but I think it is just too little. The W217H, while not being a large watch, is considerably bigger, considerably more legible and much better spec. Indeed, it was released to replace the F91 a couple of years ago. I don't think it'll ever do that, but that doesn't mean to say that it shouldn't. There it is on my seven inch wrist. It's not a big watch, as I said, but it doesn't feel small. If you're looking for something that's legible, that's simple, that's reliable, that's economical, this is gonna be a short video for you. You can pretty much stop here after buying one of these. Not exactly packed with features. There's a day and date display there. There's a single alarm. There's a stopwatch. There's a backlight, which is actually quite workable. There's 50 meters of water resistance. Uh, did I mention the stopwatch, the backlight and the alarm? Yeah, that is pretty much it. A really simple watch, a really enjoyable watch. I think it's like walking barefoot on grass for me. This is a kind of horological grounding experience when I wear one of these basic Casios. I love them. Moving on to the Hamilton Khaki King, one of only three Swiss watches on this list. I referred to it as the Value King when I made the video. You get a lot of watch for only 379 US dollars here from Joma Shop. You're on that Swatch Group ladder. You've got a fantastic brand name on your wrist, and I think it is a really versatile, classically styled, handsome, well-proportioned field watch. So 40 mil diameter, 20 mil lug widths, this one, double door sapphire crystal and a fantastic movement. Case finishing on it is a bit basic but it's a field watch. It's not supposed to be all that fancy here. There's certainly no real weak areas, solid links, solid end links, a decent mill clasp on this one as well. And a day date complication. There really aren't all that many watches that have that style of day date complication anyway. Not for this price. There's a nice sunburst effect on the dial as well. And in the back is a Swiss made automatic movement with an 80 hour power reserve. Truly remarkable at the price. 
Couple of negs with this one, the high polished bezel will tarnish quite quickly. You're gonna scuff that, you're gonna scratch it. There's no anti-reflective coating on the sapphire, as you can see here, and it's only got 50 meters of water resistance, which kind of dents its credibility as a true all-rounder. Don't expect a luxury watch, but you get a really solid offering, and I think one that ticks an awful lot of boxes for less than $400 if you opt for the Hamilton Khaki King. Next up is an $80 Russian tank, the Vostok Komandersky GMT. No list of value for money watches would really have been complete without a Vostok. I get it, they're not to everyone's taste, they're kind of kitsch, quirky looking things and they have some unusual features. I had a guy email me last week saying he just bought one and the crown was all wobbly. I was like young Padwan, that's how it's supposed to be, persevere. The Vostok Komandersky 650-539 from Meronom. 80 US dollars. I think this is the pick of the bunch in terms of value. It's really an amphibia GMT, if you see what I mean. It's got that domed acrylic crystal. It's got 200 meters of water resistance, a screw down crown, all stainless steel construction. Don't forget to add one of those mesh straps though for only $12 more because the standard bracelet is pretty hideous. I think this is a good looking watch as well. All brushed stainless steel finish. It's got a plain unsigned crown, but at least it's stainless steel. Unlike some of the chrome brass models from previous, 41 mil diameter, 20 mil lug width and for your $12 those Vostok mesh straps are absolutely fantastic. They're much better than stuff that I've paid two and three times the price for on eBay. Now these Vostoks have a great story. They go back to the 1960s where the Soviet era engineers had to work around the limitations of their machinery. It's got a two-piece case back so you never shear the rubber seal and that admittedly slightly rough looking movement will run for 10 years without a service. They're all designed to be user repaired as as well. They're fairly easy to adjust these ones. Similarly, the acrylic crystal can be buffed with a bit of poly watch. They're great beater watches, these ones, if you like the look. I like the look. I've got quite a few in my collection. This is the pick of the bunch, the common DSK GMT, on your wrist for less than 100, even with the strap upgrade. Moving on to the first of two chronographs today with great backstories. I love a watch with a story and the Seagull 1963 certainly does not disappoint. I've made a few videos on this one, the last one asking if they were fakes. My conclusion was yes, no, maybe, and it doesn't matter anyway. I'd be buying this one from AliExpress. $167 gets you the more versatile sapphire version. There's an acrylic version, there's 38 mil, there's 42s, there's panda dials, and these things are available from outlets all over the world. So you're certainly not short of options when it comes to buying the Seagull 1963. And it's such a cute little watch. Applied indices, blue hands, manual wine Seagull ST19001 movement in the back of this one. Now that is based on an old Swiss caliber, the Venus 175 that the Chinese bought the right to bought the machines and all the tools to in the 1960s. This was a prototype that didn't quite make it into production in 1963 for the People's Liberation Army Air Force Division. They were brought back to life in the early 2000s and these reproductions have been very, very popular with collectors ever since. Look at that column wheel chronograph, mechanical chronograph on your wrist for less than $200. You cannot, you simply cannot get that anywhere else. And like I said, I think it's a great looking little watch. I've had a couple of them. I've had the 38 mil with acrylic. I sold that because it was a bit too delicate for me. I prefer the slightly more robust sapphire version here with the display case back. And it wears really nicely on wrist as well. Like I said, if 38 is too small, there's 42s. You shouldn't be paying more than $300 for any of these versions. Great value, I think. Moving on to the only micro brand watch on the list and a watch that I heralded as the best watch under $300 when I reviewed it, I have not changed my mind. Now I review a lot of micro brand watches and they offer outstanding value in a lot of cases, but there's no point me telling you how good the Phoebus Eagle Ray GMT is or the Richard Legrand Odyssey 2 is or the Zelos Swordfish is because they're all unavailable. Micro brands tend to do short runs. That's great for exclusivity, but it doesn't really make them all that great for me to add to the list today. Now, Helms, you can sort of buy. They make them in small batches. Send them an email, wait patiently, and you will be rewarded by one of the best watches that you can pick up at any price and certainly 
the most fantastic watches that I've looked at for under 300. Three to choose from, the Kurabui, the Komodo, and the Vanuatu. Take your pick, they're all fantastic. This is the Kurabui. It's an out and out dive watch with a crown down there at the four. Amazing loom on this one, domed sapphire, sapphire bezel insert, and one of the best made bracelets you'll find on a watch at the price. The Komodo is the, in inverted commas, smaller one at 40 mil, but they're all big chunky watches on wrist here, be under no illusions, 200 grams plus, all powered by a pretty basic Seiko NH35 movement, but don't let that worry you. My pick is the Vanuatu. I think it is an absolutely stunning looking watch. A tool diver, real no nonsense, all about the legibility, flat sapphire crystal on this one, you get a date complication, color match down there at six o'clock, and you get heaps for your money with these helms. They're all ISO certified, they're individually pressed tested by the owner of the company. He hand signs a little card for you. The accessories are well priced. I cannot overstate the value. Available on one of these helms. Be patient, get in line, get one on your wrist. They're amazing. Casio number two, a genuine classic and the ultimate beater watch, as it says on the thumbnail. I don't use the word beater all that often. I think it's a bit disparaging, but this watch was actually designed to be beaten. You can still pick them up for less than 50 US dollars, but like a lot of these watches, the prices have crept up over the last few years. Now, as I said, I think this is genuinely a design classic. Here's the current watch. Here's the original G-Shock 5000 Square from 1983. It's almost indistinguishable. Here's the first of the 5600s from 1987. How many designs from the 80s are still as topical today still look as good today. Not all that many, if I'm being honest. And it's the smallest of the G-Shocks, 43 and a bit mil in diameter and reasonably thick. But remember, these watches are made of resin. They're all quite lightweight as well. I'm not suggesting that you can rock this one with a suit, although I've seen it done on more than one occasion. It's a real weekend warrior, this one. Pretty basic module here, stopwatch, countdown timer, single alarm, and a decent light in the corner of the screen. You can see the day of the week, the date and the, the month on there as well, permanently. I think they wear quite comfortably. As I said, it's a reasonable size G without being ridiculous, but they don't weigh an awful lot. These resin bands are integrated, again, helping protect the module, 200 meters of water resistance. Swap the battery out every two or three years and you can beat one of these to within an inch of its life. It loves it. That's what it was designed for. Next up, it is the legendary Seiko Saab, a watch that I've been on a bit of a journey with myself, to be honest. I first got a hold of this cream-dialed 035 model after they were discontinued, and I thought, yeah, it was okay, but I didn't see what all the hype was about necessarily. I then got a hold of the black dial 033, and I was like, oh, okay, now I get it, now I understand it, and I had to buy one for myself. Hence the second video, my mea culpa, I was wrong about the Seiko Saab. Now, this continued, yes, now for two years, and they are getting genuinely difficult to find these ones. I suggest that you have a look on eBay. There were tens of thousands of them made, so it's not like trying to find a micro where there were only 100 or 200 models made. You can still pick them up brand new for less than 600. I'd be trying to get one for a bit cheaper than that. Maybe a lightly used sample somewhere around 400 US dollars. That's roughly what I paid and I'm still a very happy man. I still think there's great value in these ones, even in the 400s. Hard to believe that they were in fact less than $300 new. I've gone on record as saying that if my wife needed a kidney or something, you get the idea. If I had to liquidate everything, I would not feel unhappy wearing one of these on my wrist for the rest of my days. It just has a little bit of the magic about it, this one. This was Seiko before they started turning the screw and reducing the value equation on a lot of their watches. Not perfect, the bracelet is ordinary at best. There's a bit of a gap between the clasp on my model, only two levels of micro adjust, but it is slightly smaller at 38 and a half mil, it's slightly lighter, so I'm inclined to wear it looser than I normally would anyway. 6R15 movement in these is pretty good. It's got loom, it's got sapphire crystal. They make fantastic everyday watches and there is a bit of magic about them. If you catch them in the right light, they look sensational. I've personally looked at Grand Seiko's, but why would I spend all that extra money when I've got this in my collection, which is really pretty close to it. Great value watch, not quite as great as it was when they were readily available, but still highly recommended if you can pick one up, the Seiko Saab. 
Chronograph number two and another watch with a fantastic backstory as well as I think offering just sensational value for money. This one currently from Joma Shop, the Bull of a Lunar Pilot, yours for a mere $339 and that is for the special edition version with two straps in with the package and I think you get a great watch for your money. If your wrist is big enough, please check before purchase. The story goes with this one that this guy, Commander Dave Scott, in charge of one of the Apollo missions in the early 70s, he was just about to blast off when the dial popped off his Omega Speedmaster. He happened to have a bullet in his back pocket, slapped it on his wrist. There's pictures of it on the moon on his wrist. Here is the watch in question, sold at auction for a million dollars. Bullover realized there was an opportunity and re-released this model about five years ago. Now it's an ultra high frequency, ultra accurate quartz movement. Even that second hand down there at six ticks twice per second. So it kind of does a reasonable job of masquerading as an automatic, but at a fantastic price and with the accuracy and reliability that you only get from a quartz. I've got a seven inch wrist for your reference. It doesn't look too bad from the overhead shot, but those long lug to lugs, 52 mil lug to lugs, I found it just a bit too big for me. There you can see the sideways shot. It just doesn't curve in the way that I would have wished it to. But that's not to say that my father is not a very happy recipient of this watch. He wears it every day. He absolutely loves it. If you've got the wrist for it, I think those watches are sensational. Next up, it's a two for one deal on Pagani Designs. I really couldn't have made this list without featuring at least one Pagani. They just offer outrageous specifications for the cash. Obviously they are just out and out clones of Rolex, so zero originality here, but the specs on offer are amazing. 75-ish dollars, a little more for the chronograph for these ones. However, there is a sale on AliExpress just about every 20 minutes. So if you are prepared to bide your time, you should be able to pick these up for no more than $70 each. Now the Submariner style watch, the specs on this are outrageous. Ceramic bezel, sapphire crystal, usable cyclops, a little bit of loom, screw down crown, 100 meters of water resistance. It's made of stainless steel. It has a solid end link, solid link with its screws, bracelet, a display case back, and a reasonable attempt at a Rolex style clasp mechanism. The only downer with this one is that it's 43 mil in diameter. It's quite a bit bigger than the sub upon which it is based. Do bear in mind that your money is spread very, very thinly across all the components of these watches. I've had reliable reluctant clasps, I've had dodgy spring bars, on occasional Paganis myself, so do remember that. If you get a good one though, there's nothing that can beat them for value. This one, the Daytona copy, it features a Seiko VK63 Mecha Quartz movement, again, screw down crown, screw down pushers. They've now upgraded to 100 meters of water resistance. It's a good looking bracelet, sapphire crystal, ceramic bezel insert, and again, that Rolex copy clasp. So zero originality, I grant you that. They are both just out and out Rolex clones, but if you're okay with that, definitely worth a look purely based on the amazing specs for not a lot of money. Swiss made watch number two and one of my favorite ever thumbnails. It's the Glycine Combat Sub. I reckon you should be looking on eBay for these ones. Automatic, new with tags, all day long for less than 350 US dollars. I'd be opting for one of the models on a bracelet. There's so many to choose from. The golden eye, the gold bezel ones are also very, very popular. Sell very well used if you do decide to flip it at some point in the future. I was very impressed with the Glycine Combat Sub that I reviewed. It's a substantial watch, 42 mil in diameter, but it's super slim because it uses, well, they call it a Glycine GL blah, blah, blah. It's either a Salita 200 or an ETA 2824, they don't quite specify. Either way, it's great value for that movement in a proper screw down crown, 200 meters Swiss made dive watch. There you can see it on my wrist, nice and slim. And there really is one of these for all tastes and all flavors. There's so many different dial configurations. There's so many different colorways. You will find a combat sub that suits you. I hear also that Costco, this style of place, occasionally they pop up for less than 300 US dollars. Is that rain on a watch in Sydney? That's outrageous. People are a little bit wary of glycine these days because they were bought by Invicta a few years ago with the reputation for quality that Invicta doesn't have, but this is an existing previous model from Glycine and I just can't see them messing around with it. I think fantastic value if you're paying less than 350 USD for the combat sub of your choice. 
Okay, third and final Casio, and is a watch that gets a lot of love on YouTube. It's the AE1200, aka the Casio Royale, because it kind of looks like a Seiko that Roger Moore wore an octopusy. Anyway, a little bit tenuous. They're not as great value as they used to be. They used to be able to pick them up for less than $15. You can still comfortably pick them up for around the 20 here on Amazon.com. Now, there are a couple of different versions. I have all of the different versions. I have got the stainless steel braceleted one. There's an odd looking green one as well, which I picked up recently. Also, the resin banded one is the cheapest and it's a good size as well. Here it is next to the 217 that I showed you earlier and the F91W and it's considerably larger than both of them. The looks are perhaps a bit of an acquired taste, but the module has certainly quite a bit going on here. It's a well timer. You can store four cities. It's got five alarms, it's got a countdown timer, it's got a stopwatch, it's got a 10 year battery, 100 meters of water resistance, incredible specs for a watch that is less than $25 even to this day. Stainless steel back on these, unscrew that yourself, pop in a new battery every decade, two big LEDs in the corner mean this is a great nighttime watch, it's a great after dark watch. Now I think it wears well, again it's a Casio, it's light. The looks are not gonna to be to everyone's taste, as I've said there, there is quite a bit going on, but I quite like the looks. The resin bands do degrade and eventually snap over time. 18 mil lug widths as well, means you're not gonna be swapping this one onto other straps or NATOs as readily. It doesn't really look good on them. So bear that in mind if you're a bit of a tinkerer, but for 25 or less, you really can't go wrong with a Casio Royale. No wonder they're so popular. I tried to stay away from big hyperbolic claims on thumbnails, but I don't think I was sticking my neck out too far, claiming that the Orient Kamasu is currently the best dive watch you can buy for less than 200 US dollars. I think it's generally now becoming a bit of a favorite amongst watch aficionados and YouTubers alike. Here it is on Joma Shop 199 for the black dial version. Bear in mind here, you can pick up a couple of different colors. There's a blue dial, there's a green dial, and there's a burgundy dial, which is pretty hot. Expect to pay maybe 10 10 to $20 more for those. Orient, Japanese brand, sister brand to Seiko, absolutely fantastic reputation. Couple of compromises here, you can see the hollow end links and I'm just showing the slightly cheap look and press clasp, but the big attractant to the Orient Kamasu, apart from that brand name, is the sapphire crystal covering the dial. That is such a boon from a big brand Japanese watch at this price. It's a good looking watch, I think too, perhaps a little fussier than the equivalent Seiko, so you're gonna to have to get used to that. It's only an aluminum bezel insert there, but it does have an Orient in-house caliber with a day and date complication. There's a pleasant sunburst effect on the dial, and the loom is fantastic for 200 US dollars. This Kamasu took out its episode of Loom Wars. It was the cheapest watch to do so at that point. You will not be disappointed by this one if you're looking for an all-rounder. I definitely think this one would slip under a shirt cuff quite easily 41 mil diameter it really suited me i think great size great proportions 22 mil lug width gives it a bit of heft as well but it is quite slim all things considered that's the overhead shot great legibility here Unless Orient do something silly and discontinue this model, I can only see the Kamasu becoming more and more popular over the next four to five years with good reason it's great all right, the last of the AliExpress watches, the $99 diamond in the rough. Now it says $99 on the thumbnail. If you're interested in one of these, if you're looking for a kind of dressy, casual everyday watch or an occasional wear dress watch, the 125 normally from the Carison official store, that's a really good price. However, on sale, you should be able to pick one up with a couple of vouchers. And like I say, there's at least a sale every quarter for less than a hundred bucks. It is pretty amazing for that price. New colorway as well on mesh straps too. I'm hoping to get one of those in for review quite soon. Now, the elephant in the room, the diamond crumb and that slightly chintzy index at 12 o'clock. If you don't like that, skip ahead a minute and a half to the next watch. If you're okay with that, then this watch is pretty sensational because when you flip it round, that's what's in the back, a Miyota 9015. Now, if you know your watches, if you know your movements, and I assume that most of you do, that is an incredible movement to get in a watch at this price. That movement was designed by Miyota to rival the Eta 2824, beautifully decorated, high beat, four hertz, Japanese made, hacking and hand winding 24 dual auto. To find it in a watch at this price is almost unheard of. On wrist, the double domed sapphire crystal really sets this off. Yes, did I mention double 
of those sapphire crystal, a few different colorways, the leather strap is actually quite wearable, the deployment is manageable. If you don't wear this type of watch every day and you don't want to invest a lot of money in it, 99 bucks, these things are fantastic if you're okay with that diamond. Our penultimate dollar dazzler today is the Citizen BN01050. It really needs a catchier name than that. A proper tool dive watch for 165 US dollars there, also on Joma Shop. From the quirky and surprising packaging to the fantastic loom, this watch just reeks of quality for the money. It's a real set and forget tool watch. You buy this one as a faithful, reliable companion that is gonna last you for years and years and years. Fabulous case finishing on this, I was really impressed. Definitely one of the nicest finished cases on any watch that I've looked at for less than 200 USD. Super legible, great size handset, nicely in proportion. They managed to squeeze a date complication down there at the four o'clock without making a complete hash of it. Now the case back says there, do not open, not user serviceable. This is an EcoDrive solar powered quartz movement in here. You can set it, bring it out of a drawer once a month if you are into water sports. And as I said, it will just keep on ticking this one. I think it was well proportioned as well. 20 mil lug width, super slim, worn nicely on my seven inch wrist. Now the supplied rubber strap is stiffer than a corpse on Viagra. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend that one to you. I think you're better buying a silicone band, swapping that out at some point, but a very, very impressive offering from Citizen. I've sometimes accused their watches of being vanilla, but this is one vanilla you're not going to get bored of long term. And last but not least, it's the most expensive watch on the list today and one which does rather push beyond the $500 on the thumbnail. It's the Christopher Ward C60 Trident Pro. I reviewed this one towards the middle of last year and I was massively impressed with the watch and with what I found. Now, a couple of caveats with this one. That price is in Aussie dollars, by the way. The model I'm gonna show you, the 40 mil, there's a 38, there's a 40, and there's a 42, so you've got a few choices there. A few different colorways as well, so make sure you buy the right one. Make sure you buy the right one because if you sell this watch, you're probably gonna lose a little bit of money. CWs don't hold their value as well as an Oris or a Tissot or a Longines at the equivalent price would, but they do deals. They sell direct, you should be able to get $100 off this one, 100 pounds off this one every so often. That takes it down to somewhere in the mid to high 600 US dollar mark and the quality on offer for that price is just fantastic. Hence, its inclusion on this value list today. The case machining is beautiful. The bezel action is great. The finishing of those indices, it's got C1, X1 grade Super Luminova, screw down crown, Salita 200 in the back, all just nicely done. They also offer the best warranty available on any of these watches, really the best warranty available for less than three grand. It wore well on me, it's got an on-the-fly adjustment in that clasp. Bit of a light catcher though, the ceramic bezel and all those high polished indices in the hands. And of course, that polarizing Christopher Ward logo placed there at the nine o'clock. So like I said, there's a few caveats, a few conditions with this one, but if you're looking for a great value watch and you buy it with a hundred pounds off and you're gonna keep it long term. Christopher Ward, honestly, one of the best made watches that I've come across at the price. So there you have it, an excellent top 15 value for money, best of the best list today then. I think that you can buy any of those watches with confidence, knowing that you'll be happy with the deal you got on them, happy with the price you paid, and happy with the watch you bought, not just today, but also in a month's time, six months time, five years time, 10 years time, whatever. They are all fantastic watches in my humble opinion. Thank you again for your support of the channel. Thank you for watching the videos. See you soon.